the one with lambda is going to give me equations for e n and psi n, and the one with lambda square is going to give me equations for e n two and psi n two, right? So here we are not bothered about psi n two now and the higher order terms. We will only be concentrating on the first order correction to energy eigenvalue and, uh, and the eigen function, and the second order correction to your energy eigen value. Okay. Now. So these are the terms I'm going to get, right? So if I want to find, suppose there is some question which asks me to find. So they have given me a modified Hamiltonian, right? And then they tell me, okay, you find your first order correction to energy eigen, energy eigen value. So what I do is I use this formula, find the expectation value, and then get the results. Right? So similarly, I do it for psi n's and e n's, right? E n two's. Okay. Now here, why do I call this theory as Non-degenerate. Okay. Now, non-degenerate because okay. First is first. Let us understand what is degeneracy. Degeneracy is suppose you have two different states, say psi one and psi two. They are with eigenvalues say e one. And e two, right? So psi ones and psi twos both are having unique eigenvalues. So that meaning these states are non-degenerate. Okay. But if my both psi ones and psi twos they have my same energy eigenvalues, then this is called degenerate states. Right? So psi ones and psi twos will be called as degenerate states. But if they are going to have unique unique eigenvalues. Then they will be called non-degenerate states. Okay. So now, why is this particular expression applied only for your non-degenerate ones? Is because if you see see the expression for psi n one, you have psi n one as summation over whatever is there in the numerator. I'm not writing that. Then we have e n zeros and e m zeros. Okay. So what happens is, so what does e n zero? Right, so e n zero. Say for example, I take my uh, your infinite square well, where psi n is two by a sine n pi x by a, and my e n is n square pi square h plus square by twice m a square. Right. So now e n zero means for a particular Wave, fun uh, wave function psi n, I have one e n zero, and for psi m, I have another e m zero, right? So, but if I am saying that my both psi n zeros and psi m zeros, they are degenerate, right? They have degenerate eigenvalues. Then both of these will have Same energy eigenvalues, so meaning my E n will also be equal to E m, and hence this term is going to blow up, right? So, and I cannot allow that to happen. Hence, this expression is considered only for your non-degenerate perturbation theory. I hope, I mean, it's clear by now. So, I mean, here in this ex expression. So psi and zeros are the eigen functions of your known exact uh, particular uh, problems, uh, like for instance your infinite square well, right, or your harmonic oscillator. Similarly, these are the um, these are the same things for your known solutions. And so whenever you have zero, it me meaning they are for your exact solutions, right? Okay. So now let us consider one example where You have your infinite square well, right? You have your infinite square well, and so this is my v of x, and this axis is my x-axis. So. What I do is I raise my potential. So initially it was here, right? 
But what I have done is I have raised the potential C by value V0. Okay. So now if I want to find what is my first order correction to this, then for this particular problem, then it's very simple. I just need to do do this, right? So that simply gives me psi n0. Okay, let me just write psi n0 here. Now, what is the perturbation here? H prime. What is H prime here? H prime is the perturbation. And in this particular problem, my V0 acts as a perturbation. Right? So, I mean, because I have lifted it by a term, V0. Okay. Right? And here, I have lifted it for the whole width. So, I mean, hence, because of that, I can take this out and I can simply make use of this. Now, I know that these states are normalized, hence it's given by, so this, because these states are normalized, it is equal to 1, right, and hence this is equal to V0. So, the first order correction to this is equal to V0. Meaning, so if I am, if I was asked to find the first order correction, the first order correction to it is after adding a potential of V0, after raising my flow of the potential by V0, I get my correction as V0. Meaning, my total energy has now become En0, which is this, right? So these are zeros. So En0, which is this, and the new one, En1, which is V0. So this is the correction you have got for this particular problem, right? So you can again check what is En2, right? So if I call, I mean, when I'm doing, uh, when I'm checking the higher order corrections, meaning I'm trying to be more, I'm trying to get more closer to my exact answer, okay? So here we want to E and do because like this is it. I mean, the first order correction is enough to find the exact answer here, okay? So now let me take another example wherein, so this potential is not like this, but the same square well potential, right, which I have, has been raised by, say, this amount. I was supposed to be having like this, but it has been raised, right? So it is 0 to A by 2, it has been raised, and so this is A, and so this here, is V0, right? So if I want to find the first order correction to this, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find En, En1, which is given by psi n0, h prime psi n0. So I can take my h prime. So what is my h prime? My h prime is V0, right? Okay. So because this is expectation value, I can write it as 0 to a by 2 because I need to know that my perturbation is till a by 2, right? So hence 0 to a by 2. In my first case, I had my perturbation running over the over whole of this, right? But here I have my 0 to a by 2. So that gives me psi n 0 and h prime here is v0 which and psi n 0 d x, right? So 0 to a by 2, I can anyways take v0 outside. So 0 to a by 2. And so I replace it with sin zeros for this, which is 2 by a sin square n phi x bar a d a d x, right? So if I calculate this, I'm going to get it as v0 by. So you all can do it. And you want this uh, integration is simple. So you are going to get it as V0 by 2. So that means my En, right, after the correction is given by your En0, which is this n square by square h dot square by square semi square, and V0 by 
two degrees. Right? So, this is the first order correction uh, to your for this particular perturbation. So, you can go for higher order corrections, but this is enough for us, right? So, this is, uh, this, this is it for uh, today's video. So, in the next uh, part, we will be discussing more problems. And here, if you see, I have just discussed about your constant perturbations, right? V naught, uh, it's raised by some height, and then again, the whole of the floor was raised. I have just done constant perturbations. In the next part, I will try to do more problems on when the perturbations are not constant. Uh, so that's it. So the, the whole thing here to remember is you need to know the exact solutions, right? So once you know the exact solutions, then you just apply these formulas, right? And then you find various corrections to your energy eigenvalues and to your wave functions.